Good morning, darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. As you can probably tell, I'm having a bit of a pampering, chilled morning. It's currently half past seven and I'm going to have a very productive morning. I've got some travel plans over the next couple of days, so I thought that today's video could have a bit of a travel theme to it because I have been getting quite a lot of questions about my kind of pre-travel pamper routine, how I get to travel so much, how I prepare for travel. So I thought I would just answer all of those in today's vlog because I'm going to be pretty much doing all of those things today. I'm going to attempt to answer one of my most frequently asked questions as well, which is how I afford to travel so much. So later on, once my coffee has kicked in, I will have a little bit of a chat all about that. And I'm also very pleased to be partnering with Gillette Venus for today's video. So I'm going to be, of course, showing you as part of my pre-holiday pampering routine, my shaving routine, some tips and tricks along the way to ensure that you remain silky smooth throughout all of your holidays days so without further ado I'm going to go and hop in the shower and um, remove my face mask this is actually an anti-pollution face mask it's got lots of vitamins in there so I've spent quite a lot of time in the city lately for meetings and things and I just felt like my skin needed a deep clean so got on my anti-pollution face mask okay darlings we are fresh out the shower so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my shower pamper routine how I prepare for holidays um how beautiful are these flowers in the background I was at a blogging event yesterday and they were going to throw away all the flowers so I said no I'll take them don't let anything go to waste and yes I'm wearing a different dressing gown because I have a different dressing gown for my post shower beauty routine which is totally ridiculous I know um and if you can hear any snuffling noises it's because this little boy is feeling very, very needy this morning. Oh my goodness, I could not love my baby anymore. <laughs> You're crawling on your mummy. <laughs> okay, so as with most things in life, preparation is key. Now, when it comes to travel, that applies to checking the weather forecast before you start packing, making sure you have the right clothing, um, making sure that you have your transfers sorted, you know where your hotel is, you know your currency. Preparation is super important. And with the face and body, it is exactly the same. So I do enjoy the whole preparation process of getting ready for a summer holiday. I like to be prepared for last minute trips as well. So a few tips for keeping yourself maintained, let's say. The first thing that you guys know that I love to do is get individual lash extensions. I talked about the whole process in a very recent vlog. I'll leave that one linked down below and up on the screen. But basically these are individual lash extensions um, and I just feel a lot more comfortable without makeup on when I have these on. I feel like I don't need to wear any makeup at all on beach days, even times like this, chatting to the camera in a proper sit down setup. Normally I'd put on a little bit of makeup, a bit of mascara, but with lash extensions, it just gives me the confidence to feel like, I don't know, I just, I just like them, personal preference. And then obviously I love to do things like face masks. I like to hydrate the skin, make sure I'm drinking a lot of water and things like this. I do all the time, but I think it's even more important just before holiday, just so you feel your most confident and glowing, radiant self when you are away, because it's just nicer to not have to worry about things like that when you do want to be spending more time on the beach, relaxing, etc., etc. And then when it comes to the body, we spend so much time and money and effort focusing on our face, but actually, and especially when you're abroad, your body is on display sometimes. So it's nice to make a little more effort in the body area as well. We all conjure up images of that perfect beach selfie with salty hair from the ocean and perfectly smooth legs with not a hair on the body from here downwards. But personally, I think that's a little bit unrealistic. Um, Sorry, I have something in my eye. <laughs> okay, downside of having eyelash extensions is that when you get an eyelash in your eye, they are monster eyelashes. Look at this. Can you see how big that eyelash is? Oh my goodness, it's like having a sword in your eyeballs. <laughs> okay, what was I talking about? Um, oh yeah, so picture perfect vacation style. We all know that those beautiful beach photos have probably been facetuned a little bit. And you know what, when it comes to preparing the body, it's whatever works best for you. So I'm gonna give you my 
body routine starting off with the first thing i used in the shower this morning which was a body polisher an exfoliator i think sorry dickens has got a sneezing attack an exfoliator obviously helps to prepare the skin for shaving it helps to prepare the skin for fake tan for sun exposure it helps get rid of any dead skin skin cells and just give you a beautifully smooth finish which is the best base you can have really for all of the next things that i'm going to talk about my favorite is this one it's from a brand called herbivore which you've heard me talking about a lot it's their coco rose coconut oil body polisher coconut oil is very hydrating and hydrating is very important for hair removal as well i'll talk more about that in a second it is i think the granules i practically finished this in fact i'm gonna have to get myself a new one the granules are sugar so they actually very gently exfoliate you and then they just melt away so obviously nothing harmful going down the drain which is wonderful i usually exfoliate while i've got my purple shampoo in it helps the toning take its time and i find that that's more effective if you don't tone your hair then i would say you might want to do that while you've got your conditioner in and it just gives the conditioner a little bit more time to work its magic so next thing i do is hair removal and i am using at the moment the gillette venus spa breeze in conjunction with this, when I'm at home, this is the Satin Care Vanilla Cashmere with a touch of Ole um, shaving gel. I don't take the shaving gel with me on holiday. The Spa Breeze razor, this one here, actually has, um, as you can see, sorry, the focus is not the best. It's got these moisture bars at the top and at the bottom. This one smells so nice. Not that you can really tell afterwards but the spa breeze it's got a touch of avocado it's got olive in there as well so it's really moisturizing for the skin which means that when i'm abroad or when i'm in a rush i don't need this but i do find in the long run and when i'm at home using a shaving gel it helps to prepare the skin and the hairs much better helps to moisturize helps to make the whole experience a lot more comfortable which in the long run helps reduce shaving rash which is a big bugbear of mine it's something that i used to suffer from i'll give you my tips actually for shaving rash okay I have been asked this randomly quite a lot recently. Um, the most important thing is to ensure that the skin and the hair is hydrated because shaving rash can often occur um, when the skin is not in an optimal condition for shaving. Ways that you can help your skin remain hydrated are using a shaving gel, tip number one, using a razor with moisture bars, such as this one, tip number two, making sure your blades are sharp. That is so important. If you notice that the blades are getting worn down or if your moisture bars have worn down, it's time to change your razor head. That is really, really important. Not only do these tips help to prevent shaving rash, also exfoliating helps prevent shaving rash as well because that helps with getting a close shave, but also the things like the moisture bars, like the three blades on this, mean that you can get really like in close to all the different contours of the body, helps to get as close to the skin as possible so you get a really close shave helping you remain smooth and silky for longer this razor hopefully my focus will work also has a pivoting head as you can see here so it just wobbles around helping you get an even closer shave helps you get into any corners behind the knees over the kneecap so minimizing any chance of any nicks any cuts which obviously is a bonus so yeah that's why i particularly like this razor for preventing any shaving rash and getting a super close smooth shave as I mentioned I will take this on holiday with me I will usually take a spare head with me as well um, and I don't keep it in the shower because if I shower and then Charlie showers it can wear down the moisture bars a lot quicker and I personally think that the moisture bars are the best bit it's almost like having a layer of body butter over your skin before you shave which is amazing and on that note I know that um, I have in the past and I've heard friends are like oh just use a shampoo or one of these like foaming body washes that I would not recommend using that for shaving because anything that isn't specifically made for shaving can cause irritation on the skin could cause a rash and that is not what we want on a holiday so stick to what you know this is my dream team um, if you haven't tried shaving with shaving gel yet then highly recommend with a razor I use this on my underarms and also I find that it's just so much more pampering on the underarms with the moisture bars other than just like a scratchy razor that causes all kinds of bumps and friction and I use it on my legs but then when it comes to the bikini area I use something a little bit different so everyone is obviously different when it comes to how they like to prepare their bikini area for holidays 
I read in the Gillette Venus report that 92% of people, or females, <laughs> like to do something, whether that's trimming or maintaining their bikini area before holiday. Many like to do it all year round, um, and some people just like to do it during the warmer months. This is the new gadget from Gillette Venus. This is their bikini precision trimmer. As you can see, I've got this little comb on the top here, which is removable so this is what it looks like without the head on it and then this very easy to clip on gadget here is a little comb great thing about this um, is that it is firstly very small very compact you can pop it in its little pouch for keeping it in your drawer in your bedroom or popping it in your travel beauty bag so it's very easy to just pop in the bag and carry around with you everywhere it's also battery operated which makes it even easier to just pop in a battery and get trimming it's got a little on and off switch here it's quite <laughs> loud so I won't put it on while we're filming um, but then this little head means you have total control over what you do with your bikini line whether you want a super close shave you can just take it off or if you just want to neaten the hairs all to the same length then you can pop on a little comb head and I think it's five millimeters so you can get a lovely even result so this is what the box looks like this is exclusive to boots whereas a razor you can also get in super drug um what's it say 90 degree angle head yeah the angled head is actually a really good idea because it just means that you can get into the contours of the body you can maneuver around a little bit more easily you can also see what you're doing a bit more easily obviously how you design your bikini area is totally up to you whatever makes you feel the most confident the most feminine do it as often or as not often as you want to it's totally up to you but this is 22 pound 49 i will leave the exact price on the screen so a very affordable way of neatening that area without the need for salon visits um without the need for any painful hair removal both of these are obviously pain free super quick and easy to do in the comfort of your own home so you can just style your body hair however you like which is how it should be the next thing that i will do is fake tan so I have done an entire video on my tanning routine and um, my, specifically my fake tanning routine. Tanning for me includes all kinds of things. It includes going for a spray tan, gradual tan and also proper fake tan. If you want to know my proper fake tan routine then I'll leave that video linked on the screen and down below but when it comes to um, like the day before or the days before or just maintaining a tan throughout summer I like to use a gradual tan. I wouldn't recommend using a proper fake tan straight after shaving and exfoliating because the hair removal and the exfoliating might leave your skin a little bit more sensitive so I would go for a gradual tan if you just want to add a little bit of colour straight after your pampering shower. This morning I used this one which is the Illuminating Tan and Butter from Tan Lux. I had a Tan Lux spray tan recently as well and could not recommend it enough. Really, really lovely colour. I'm also a big fan of Vita Liberata. As you know, their phenomenal two to three week tan is the one that I would go for for my proper pre-holiday fake tan. That is the one that I use in my tutorial video, so definitely check that out. But this is also very hydrating. It's got shea butter, raspberry seed oil, and I believe it's organic as well. I think it is. Either way, it's not totally full of chemicals like some other fake tans, so definitely recommend that one. Another thing that I do in the shower is, this is really sexy now, I buff my feet to make them perfectly sandal ready. This is a little foot file that I got from the body shop. I just like to do around the edges of my ankles, um, underneath the ball of my foot, just to make sure that the skin is totally smooth in all those different areas before hitting the beach. So, I think that's pretty much everything. That's my post holiday shower routine to be honest i do this most of the time nothing here is too different to my normal routine but um i just make sure that i've done it all totally properly before going on holiday so now i'm going to just do a few more emails i'm going to get myself ready and then when i've got my makeup and hair done i'm going to have a chat with you about how i afford luxury travel how i prepare my suitcase my hold on versus hand luggage things like that so stay tuned and I'll be back very, very soon. Okay, we are upstairs now. I'm looking a lot more fresh, a lot more glamorous. I've got my pretty Kate Spade dress on today. This is the favorite thing in my wardrobe at the moment. I absolutely love it. Everything about it, I adore. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen me wearing this a million times. So sorry for the spam, but when you find something that you love, then you've just gotta make the most of it. 
so I've actually written I've written myself some notes for this next little um, snippet of the video I'm gonna talk about luxury travel why I do it uh, how I afford to do it and how you can do it so first thing that I think um, should be spoken about is the fact that I am a blogger youtuber influencer that's my full-time job and that enables me to travel a lot more than I might ordinarily have been able to do so I think it's very important to consider that I um, if I was not doing this job I would still travel because I love travel I've traveled since I was a little girl and I really think that travel enhances you as a person it gives you the most incredible experiences it gives you life experience and I think it's very great for broadening your horizons and I will certainly travel with my children from a young age because I think that it really helped me grow as a person sounds really cheesy but traveling when I was younger has helped me appreciate travel and made me want to do it more so even if I wasn't doing this job I would still travel a lot but I would not be able to afford to do as much traveling as I can for two reasons the first is that I work for myself, I am my own boss, I do not have to ask anybody for holidays. Yes, it's the best. It is the best thing about being your own boss. Um, actually it's not, but it's one of, the, one of the very good things about being your own boss. So I don't, I'm not limited to the amount of days holiday I can take. And more importantly, I can work anywhere in the world. I have a very small laptop. This is my laptop, it is a MacBook Pro. I'm just watching one of my own videos right now. I was checking it, checking it over. But that is what comes with me everywhere. I also obviously take my big camera with me. This is my camera that I take a lot of my Instagram photos and I film a lot of videos on. This is my Canon 5D Mark IV with a Sigma 50mm lens. So as long as I've got my laptop, my camera, and also a memory card reader. This is my memory card reader because obviously my laptop um, doesn't actually have a memory card slot and then also my hard drive which is downstairs as long as I have those things plus the camera that you're watching this on with me and a wi-fi connection I can do my job so that could be in Thailand in the Maldives in Antarctica wherever I have internet connection and electricity I can do my job which is amazing it's something I'm so so grateful for and it means that I um, I do like to travel a lot because I find that when I'm abroad I feel a little bit more inspired I can create more exciting content a lot more varied content for you guys if you follow me on Instagram you'll know that I love sharing so much travel content and I often back it up if I like today in the UK it's quite a grey day and I'm probably gonna post something from our trip to Italy not gonna lie because it's Prettier. and I know that you guys like to see bright and inspirational content not boring grey London content so I justify traveling because it's part of my job I can create content there and I can still do all my emails write my posts edit my videos upload my content from anywhere in the world the second I'm gonna refer back to my notebook so that's how I get to travel um, as part of my job and then the next point I would say is just to choose travel as a priority with where you spend your money so for example Charlie and I don't spend a lot of money on alcohol, we don't have a child apart from our puppies, we don't have any particularly expensive habits, we don't spend money on, um, we don't spend a lot of money on a car for example, we don't smoke, so things like that are where we are really saving whereas other people might spend a lot of money on those things um, we choose not to we chose to save money in those areas and instead spend our money on holidays and travel opportunities so the second thing how I afford luxury holidays is that that is where we choose to spend our money we may make sacrifices in other areas but for us it's worth it so that we can afford to travel my next point um, when it comes to luxury hotels is making the most of all of your time there so what I like to do if I'm spending a lot of money per night at a hotel is make the most of every minute and this means arriving early checking in as early as possible I'll often try to look at my flight so that I land somewhere at around 6 or 7 a.m. I can get to the hotel hopefully before 10 a.m. often you can't check in before 3 but usually these hotels won't mind you staying by the pool using their facilities until the room is ready that is something that I love to do obviously you want to be really polite about it technically you don't need to be there until 3 p.m. or whatever time your check-in is so as long as you're friendly and polite about it and you don't take up loads of space and make too much of a commotion usually it's fine and equally I will try to arrange my departure as late as possible I'll ask very politely if they will allow me to have a late checkout 
If not, they nearly always have somewhere to store your suitcases. You can even freshen up and shower before you travel home. And that way you can turn a two night trip into a three day holiday. That's what Charlie and I did when we went to Vienna. We only stayed two nights, but it felt like a really long weekend because we made the most of all of our time there. If I'm traveling somewhere for a longer period of time, say for example, Tulum, we're currently planning our next trip to Tulum because we loved it so much. What we will do is we will stay somewhere really, really affordable for three or four nights we'll look for an Airbnb or an apartment and then we'll spend the last two or three nights somewhere really luxurious. This is a kind of high-low mentality and the reasoning behind this is that when Charlie and I arrive somewhere we get so excited, we want to explore, we want to get out of our hotel, get to know our surroundings, take loads of photos everywhere and so the first few days we actually don't spend that much time in our hotel at all. So if we stay in an apartment somewhere really affordable then we really don't end up spending much time there at all so it doesn't actually matter that it may not be the most luxurious of places. Apartments are great because you can cook there, you can make your own breakfast, you can do all your washing. That's saves you a lot of money as well and then the final couple of nights when we're just ready to totally chill out and um, relax and spend time at our place of accommodation that is when we will invest in a more luxurious hotel so normally it's a case of zero star or like one star two star places apartments airbnbs for the first few nights and then somewhere really luxurious for the last few nights and normally that two different price point wise ends up being the same cost as if we'd stayed in a average um, three or four star hotel for the duration of the trip. Another point on making luxury hotels more affordable is choosing to travel out of season. Obviously hotels have a high season, a mid season and a low season and the highest price is going to be during the high season because supply and demand, they obviously want to charge as much as they can to make as much money during the high season. If you go at the very beginning or the very end during the mid or low season, obviously there are risks, the weather might not be perfect but you can often get so, so, so much more for your money. Not only will the price very often be a lot lower to begin with, but also the chance of getting an upgrade is so much higher. If you arrive and you're very polite and friendly and chatty to the staff and you inquire about a room upgrade, if you've been nice to the person that you're speaking to, chances are they'll pull any strings that are available to them to ensure that you get the best room possible. There's no point in hotels having empty, beautiful rooms. They would rather fill them. So if you go during low season, there's more chance of being a nicer room for you to upgrade to, sometimes at very little or no cost. Speaking of upgrades, I do have a few tips when it comes to airlines. So Charlie and I, um, if we travel long haul, first of all, we will never pay for business or first class straight up. I've never travelled in first class, Charlie has, he's very lucky. But what we will do is upon check-in, we will inquire about the availability of upgrades and then very often if there are any seats available, they will be a fraction of the price during check-in. So you can do this online or at the airport. We will ask at the check-in desk if any upgrades are available on that day and if they are available, they're normally around a fifth of the price of the original cost of the upgraded seat. That is what we did when we went to Maldives at Christmas. We upgraded actually online um, during check-in on the way there and at the check-in counter on the way back and we paid I think about a tenth of the price of a normal business class ticket on Qatar Airways so we were very very happy. You are running a risk that there won't be any business class seats left but if that's a risk you're willing to take then definitely worth doing. Following on from that, another tip is of course to uh, collect points. Charlie and I are members of One World, so that's British Airways, Qatar, I want to say like Finnair. Um, a lot of airlines are part of One World and we collect points. So the more air miles we fly, the more points we collect. We can also use those on hotels and you can put those towards your upgrades and the cost of your ticket as well, which again, makes it a lot more affordable. And there are also this similar kind of thing when it comes to hotels. We learnt during our trip to the Conrad in the Maldives that the Hilton Group have Hilton Honours, which is similar to Avios in that you can collect points from your stays at Hilton Hotels, Conrad Hotels, Waldorf Astoria Hotels, you can collect points and put those points towards the value or the cost of your trip, which in turn makes it a lot more affordable, so that's another thing I'd definitely recommend. And then my final tip would probably just be to be friendly, be a nice person, not only for good karma reasons, but also because, as I mentioned, if you are friendly to people, then they are more likely to do anything in their power to help you out and, you know, just be a nice person back. So 
Charlie's a very chatty, very, very friendly person. Often at the check-in desk, he'll have loads of like friendly banter with the person behind the um, counter. That's just the kind of person that he is. It's not a strategic move, but very often it will result in us getting nicer seats. When we went to um, Mexico and our US trip, we ended up getting an empty seat in between us on the way there. No one else had this. On the way back, we had the exit row, so we had loads of leg room. Um, and our seats were changed by the person at the check-in desk so they just did any favour that they could in order to help us out often you can just get a sneaky free glass of Prosecco or anything like that just by being friendly and people will help you out in return so I think those are my main tips um, that I personally use if you have any questions on the matter then just let me know in the comments below I will try and answer them but that is personally how I afford um, and like to travel. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I should talk about. I feel like I've given you tips on when to go, how to save money with points, um, how I get to travel as a blogger. So hopefully that's answered a lot of your questions. If there are any other burning questions, not even on the topic of travel, but um, any topic, let me know and I will include the answer in a vlog like this. I've just noticed the time, so I need to curl my hair um, and then head out. As I said, I've got a couple of events to attend this afternoon. What I will do when I get back is share with you a little bit of packing advice, but I've just seen how long I've been talking for, um, so I will make it very, very snappy and then round the vlog off. So thanks for watching this bit and I will catch with you later on today. Hello again darlings, it is now the afternoon, it's about 5.30 and I am desperate for a mac and cheese, that is what I'm going to do later. Not what you should probably be having before you go on a little beach trip, but I don't really care, I'm craving mac and cheese. Um, I actually also just imported the clips that I filmed earlier into iMovie and I can see that this vlog is already 40 minutes worth of footage, so I'm going to make this last little section as quick as possible. So I'm going to share a few tips on packing. I'm about to pack for um, my little UK seaside break as I told you earlier and I'm going to be packing in my Ted Baker suitcase. This one is so handy, it's really lightweight and it's got four wheels so it's really easy to glide along and I just find that it's perfect for all of my short haul or um, mini weekend breaks. So the first thing that I would definitely recommend that you do, always recommend that you do, is check the weather for where you're going. We are going to a place called Rye in Sussex and the weather forecast is mild um, but clear so I don't need my lovely rain mac in the background but I will need something to put over my shoulders in the evenings. I would always, no matter where you're going, recommend taking something just that will take the chill off. I have a few things which I'll go and get now and show you. So this is my little cashmere cardigan and it's from a brand called Me and M and something like this is really handy not only for in the evenings if it gets a bit chilly but it's just so soft and snuggly that it's really nice to wear when you're travelling. I think we're going by bus there tomorrow so I can just like snuggle up, get a few hours sleep or just make myself more comfortable in case the aircon is turned up. So always have something really comfy with you for travelling and in the evenings. Um, but yeah, first tip, definitely always check the weather forecast. Also always know what you're going to be doing. Doing. I'm gonna check my itinerary, see exactly what we're doing, make sure I have everything appropriate. I know we're doing some yoga, so I'll make sure to pack my workout gear. And then my third tip when it comes to what to pack is to always plan your outfits, especially when you are going for just a couple of days or if you've got limited space in your luggage, always plan your outfits. So what I like to do is plan from head to toe, including my accessories, my jewelry, my bag and my shoes, and then I'll put them on if I've not necessarily worn the outfit before and take a photo in the mirror on my phone. And then I know that I already have the outfits planned out, doesn't need to be specific per day, but I can just flick through the photos on my phone and think, okay, that's the outfit that'll be most appropriate for today. And it stops you packing extra things, extra trousers for just in case. And I find that removing too many options when you are away, it just makes things so much easier if you already have specific outfits. Another tip would be to pack tote bags. So if you watched mine and Sophie's video on Be My Bride, we were saying how um, packing a little tote bag is always really handy for things like your or underwear if you do happen to have um, if you happen to buy anything while you're away it's nice to have a tote bag to just pop all of your essentials or overflow luggage in there um, and if you are traveling through the airport or anything you can put anything that you pick up 
in the little tote bag so I definitely recommend taking one of those and then I feel like my other tips are just kind of really obvious like just keeping a hold of any travel minis I actually got some um, what did I get today some little skincare pieces from Sisley these came in a birch box so these are gonna be coming with me on the trip little travel minis are always super super helpful but other than that I don't think I have any specific tricks my main one would just be all about the preparation plan your outfits and you can't go too far wrong so I am gonna round the video up here because it has been a long one but I really hope you enjoyed it all very travel themed I hope I've answered some of your questions if you had any um, as I said previously if there are any outstanding questions then I'd love to answer them. Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you've got any travels coming up, then I'd love to know where you're going. Let me know. Make me jealous. Um, and yeah, thank you for reaching the end of the video. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'll see you very soon in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.